Okay guys, this is the temperature in my greenhouse right now. It is a little over 100, about 110 degrees almost. As you can see, it's bright in here. But we're going to be installing the shade cloth now up here from this point right up here down over this front here to try to see if we can block some of the sunlight so that we can um, fix our greenhouse where it'll be feasible for us to grow stuff in. Um, so stay with us as we install the shade cloth. Okay guys, we're out here this morning on our greenhouse. We're gonna to try to get working on it, putting our, figuring out how to put our uh, shade cloth cover over it because it really wasn't designed to put one on in the beginning. So I've had one custom made to fit this particular greenhouse. And I'm gonna try now to figure out exactly how I need to try to put this thing up there and make it work on our greenhouse and where the, where the wind doesn't jerk it off and where it's extremely efficient to use. So we're fixing to start that process of trying to figure out how it works. This is a shade cloth that we've chosen uh, for this. It's 70% blockage here. Uh, we're gonna see how it works for our greenhouse. We, we don't know yet. One of these things, it's an experiment here. So 
It's 70% blockage on the black shade cloth on our greenhouse. Only time will tell. So. Shade cloth we have on the greenhouse here is a 70% blockage of the UV rays, the, uh, the intensity of them. It's not going to prevent the plant from getting the amount of sunlight that they need. It's not supposed to make them get tall and spently because they're in a shade or anything like that. The proper amount of sunlight is still supposed to filter through them. It's just that it, uh, it prevents the, the heat buildup inside the greenhouse from being as much as it normally would be. So the plants are not lacking from sunlight. I've actually talked to several people who have greenhouses and to just to make sure this is not going to be an issue and they all say they have no problems with the sunlight that's been filtered in it's actually their plants are doing just fine so so uh, for those of you who are wondering about the shade cloth uh, that's where we're at with it okay guys um, i've been asked to do a brief talk on our greenhouse and how the water system actually works in it uh, the water system is a gravity fed system in my greenhouse it requires no electricity to operate it uh, re does not require a well to operate it um, it's all done through gravity now to begin with we have the roof up here i have an five by eight roof up here with a gutter on it it comes down and runs into a barrel in the inside of the greenhouse and it is a it is a clear barrel right now a white one I do plan on changing it out to a black one because of the algae issues we've had. Uh, but it's all we had at the time that I built this. But this size panel on the roof up here um, provides, with a one inch rain, will fill this 55 gallon drum. So I, don't, I didn't need any more than that to fill this drum up. That's all I needed. This 55 gallon drum will run my greenhouse for about a week if I manage the water properly. But now, in the event that we get in a dry spell and there is no rain for that week i do have a system on the outside out here right here that i can hook a water hose up to and i can fill the 55 gallon drum with water from a well if i need to but now let me take you and show you how this system works on the inside and how it's designed okay first off we have this valve under the bottom here this valve is hooked up to the pipe that goes outside out here where we run the pump in if we need to. So we leave this turned off unless we need to be able to fill the drum with a well source water. But as we come up, we have a cutoff valve right here. We have a spigot right here. And then we have another cutoff valve over here. Now what we do if we need to fill the drum up with water from the outside is we leave this uh, cutoff valve turned off over here and we open this one up and what that does is that lets the water, it'll run up, it's going to run back here but this one stops it and then it's going to go in and it's going to fill the batter, barrel up. Once we get the barrel full of water from the outside source we'll turn this one back off and that prevents the water from going back out. We leave this one open all the time unless we want to just use the pump to water the barrels with and then we'll turn this one off and then that lets the water come up here it can't go backwards it has to go around and go through the system over here should we choose to go that route but with the weight of the water in the barrel i can turn this valve on right here and when i do as you'll watch the water it's designed in a way that gravity feeds that side first and then it feeds this side over here. And as you watch, it'll come down. And as it gets right here, this is the system we use here. There is no electricity required in this. There's no pumps required in this. This is all done through gravity flow. And then we'll turn this off. It'll take a while for this to quit running over here just simply because it's a gravity flow system. And this pot will get just as much water as the first one did. 
But now if we need to, like say we're mixing up some liquid fertilizers or something to uh, put in our little seed trays when we're starting it, we take a gallon jug. This thing is set up so I can come here. This is turned off. I can open this up and I can run the water into the jug, mix it in with my solution and be able to pour it in my seed trays up here to keep my greenhouse seed trays watered also. We also have another feature here we can use. We can turn this valve off. We can turn this valve on with a water hose hooked to it under pressure. I can hook a short water hose to this one here with a spray nozzle on the other end of it and I can actually go around through the greenhouse and I can take a spray nozzle and I can um, water any plants or anything I need in here with a wand if I need to. So this system is designed to be used any way that I need to be able to use it in my greenhouse. So as you can see, you've watched and witnessed how all the pots have gotten watered. And I hope that's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, we thought about painting the, the barrel black, but we were told by several people not to do that, that the paint would just peel off. And that the best option would be just to get another barrel and mounted in here a black one which we do have uh, to keep down the algae problems so that'll probably be our next uh, our next little project that we undertake to do in here now we are going to come over on this side here and we're going to build a matching set of shelves like we have on this side over here so that we can put more seed trays on this side over here to be able to grow a lot more stuff in our greenhouse throughout the winter time should, I, should we want to do microgreens, uh, raise more peppers, raise, you know, we're just do an array of different things here in the greenhouse throughout the winter months just to keep us with a little bit of small, fresh produce through the winter time. And plus help us to get enough seeds started for the spring so that we don't really have to buy any transplants. So um, we're hoping that the shade cloth works right now. We're, no, we're normally, at this time of the morning, it is fixing to be nine o'clock here in a few minutes. Normally by this time, the greenhouse is way over 100 degrees because the sun is a direct hit on it. Right now, I'm at 83 degrees. So the shade cloth at this point has begun to work. So we want to see during the middle of the day just exactly how hot it gets in the greenhouse and whether or not this has been worth uh, the investment that we made in it. All right, guys, uh, this is a homemade heat lamp that I used to use on my baby chicks. I have two of these made. And when the temperature outside, like this past winter, it got down to 15 degrees. And when it did, this one heat lamp in here kept the temperature in here about 45 degrees, which was okay for most plants. It didn't hurt anything. We never lost anything. As long as the temperature did not drop below 45, and we stayed that temperature and did pretty good. Um, but if it's not enough, then I also have my wood heater pipe right here. Uh, this is single wall pipe right here. And what happens is, is when I build my fire and a wood heater in there in the wintertime when it's cold, this pipe radiates heat out in here, and it also helps to heat the greenhouse in case we need to have some extra heat in here. Now we do have styrofoam up on the ceilings. I gotta go back and rework that because it's kind of falling down. I've got a new way I'm gonna do it. Um, we're gonna get take that get that taken care of. We have a fan out here now on the shelf in front of the window that kind of keeps a little air moving in here. That's been helping. Uh, we also have this table back here. It's a potting table that I built. It's got hardware cloth on it. So that the dirt falls through it as we're working, there's not really that big of an issue. It makes a great potting bench. We were having problems with fire ants chewing through the landscaping fabric that we had on the floor and they were getting up in our pots and the pots were filling up with ants. During the winter months when it's cold, the fire ants were coming inside to get in these pots to stay warm. It was just a mess. They were eating up our plants and stuff. So this year we've come in here and put down a rubber membrane on the floor and hopefully this rubber membrane is going to be able to help us to prevent the fire ants from chewing holes through it and in the event that they should make a tunnel across the floor or a line across the floor to come into it we should be able to see them coming and uh, spray them or whatever we need to do 
uh, to stop the fire ant issue in our pots this winter. And so far, since we've put down the rubber mat, we've got rid of all the fire ants, and so far we have no more in here that's messing with anything, and we hope that it stays that way through the upcoming winter months. So I hope y'all have enjoyed the tour of the greenhouse at Deep South Homestead and some of the changes that we've made. But thank you from Deep South Homestead.